Recently, we did a video about the brand new Cooler Master MA824 and it got me thinking, are there any other air coolers no one's really talking about that can compete, but also cost a fraction of the price of high-end air coolers? And that's where the Scythe Fuma 3 comes in. Let's take a look at this 50 US dollar cooler and this thing might be exactly what you're looking for. Let's jump in. The Scythe Fuma 3 has been out for a little while and to be honest, it's been sitting on our shelf giving me funny looks for about two months. Given that I've got pretty fresh results from the Noctua D15 and that new Cooler Master MA824, I wanted to see if a cheaper cooler could compare and how much it could compare by, right? Because why not? As far as the design of the Fuma 3, it uses an asymmetrical design with six heat pipes to push the fin stacks and the heat sinks themselves away from the RAM giving you some of the best RAM clearance for a mid-size air cooler. Not only that, it should allow for some of the newer motherboards with those really big M.2 heat sinks to fit as well. And you can see that on the board that we use for testing. Size matters too, right? The Fuma 3 is not a huge cooler. It's got a maximum height of around about 154 millimeters. The Fuma 3 should fit inside most mid-tower cases and even in something like the Cooler Master NR200 if you use the mesh side panel. The other main difference we're seeing with the Fuma 3 as compared to other coolers on the market is both fans spin in opposite directions to create more static pressure, helping to dissipate the heat faster with more stable airflow. It's a simple theory, but does it actually work? Well, to find out, we did some testing, but before that, Let's just take a quick look at what you get in the box. You get that classic side screwdriver. There's also some clips to mount the front fans as well as additional clips if you felt like mounting three fans for some reason. It's a little overkill if you ask me. You also get all the mounting hardware to mount on both Intel and AMD motherboards. You get the brackets for that as well. You get some thermal compound and the new Ks or Kaze Flex 2 120mm slim fans as well. Well, there's one of those and you mount that to the front of the cooler. While I'm talking about that, installation is really easy and I'm going to show you this for both AM5 and LGA 1700 right now. Both should take around about five minutes to install for each and honestly, I was gonna do a whole installation video of this cooler, but if I did that in real time, the whole video would be 10 minutes combined. So it just didn't make sense. The instructions in the box are also much better than other coolers out there as well. So it should be a breeze. We don't need an installation video for it. Right, I'm guessing you wanna know how the Fuma 3 performs. All the tests will run on our open air test bench, the one that you're seeing behind me and we use the Intel Core i9-13900K on the Gigabyte Z790 Aero G. If we wanna test coolers like this properly, we need to make them hot, and the 13900K was the best candidate for that. I also set the 13900K to stock clocks for the purposes of establishing a consistent baseline. We also use the same Scythe Thermal Compound for every single cooler that I'm showing results for here. I'm showing you the results for the video that we did not too long ago with these other two coolers because those results are still quite fresh. All the fan speeds were set in the BIOS using the performance fan curve. I know someone will ask about the acoustics for this cooler, but even at 100%, this thing is relatively quiet. Our ambient temperature is set to 18 degrees in here in the studio, and the temperatures that we recorded for all these tests with the core temperatures and the CPU package temperatures. We also recorded the maximum boost clock as well, just for a bit of context. Let's start off with the core temperatures. These over time are traditionally lower than the package temperatures. These three coolers were run with their stock setup using two fans and there's no single fan results being shown in the video at all. At idle, we recorded both average and max temperatures and it's pretty clear that all of these configurations are pretty close to performance. The outlier is the Scythe Fuma 3, as it's technically the smallest cooler with the smallest surface area for cooling. I was also surprised to see the max idle core temperature being this high, but it is what it is. At full load is where we see the largest differences. We didn't record any thermal throttling on any of these coolers for any of these setups. And it was pretty interesting to see that the Scythe Fuma 3 was only three degrees warmer than the Noctua D15. That's pretty impressive considering the price and the performance differences. It is a smaller cooler. There's no doubt about that. 
Onto CPU package temperatures at idle, we recorded both the average and max temperatures again. I'm not surprised that the Fuma 3 recorded a higher idle average temperature given what we saw with the core temperatures. What is surprising though is the max temperature falls in line with the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth. So, you know, there is that. At full load, we see very high temperatures with the Scythe Fuma 3 only being two to three degrees warmer than both the D15 and MA824. This is to be expected, but keep in mind, the 13900K is the type of processor to use all of the thermal headroom available. Also keep in mind that this is a stress test in an unrealistic worst case scenario, and you will most likely never use your PC like this but it is an interesting way to record results. This is where it gets a little bit interesting though, the boost clocks. I recorded the max boost clocks for the Fuma 3 as compared to the boost clocks recorded with both the D15 and the MA824, and the Fuma 3 gets pretty close to that 5500 megahertz level we saw with the other two coolers. For a little bit of context with the 13900K, if you're not aware, on paper, it has a max boost and turbo frequency between 5700 and 5800 megahertz respectively on a $50 air cooler and a CPU that can melt through steel beams. <laughs> This is, this is pretty legit, not gonna lie here. Over the last couple of years, I've been singing the praises of Scythe being a valid alternative to Noctua coolers for many, many people. What's more interesting about this though is the fact that the Fuma 3 is a smaller cooler in both width and height. It's arguably one of the easiest coolers to install for new builders too, and the price is just absurd for what you're getting. Not to speak too soon though, but I think Scythe has absolutely nailed it with the Fuma 3, but that's not all. It doesn't end there. If you're all about the aesthetics and looks of a cooler and you want that clean look, the Fuma 3 has that cover too. Literally, they cover the end of the heat sinks to make them look clean. The styling for those who aren't into brown Noctua fans or big logos of other coolers, makes the Fuma 3 look classy. Usually I don't care about how cool it looks, but the Fuma 3 does look nice. The Scythe Fuma 3 executes on what they've shown us over the years, that they can make compelling coolers that are cheaper than their competition, that they can be as performant as the competition, and make coolers that people actually want. Although the Fuma 3 didn't perform as well as the other two coolers in the video, you have to remember that even though the Fuma 3 is a dual heatsink design, it's not even technically in the same class as the other two coolers that I've shown here. That's because it's kind of in a class of its own. The fact that it's only a few degrees off speaks volumes about the quality of Scythe coolers. If they did make a comparable cooler, I wonder how those results would go. The best part of the Scythe Fuma 3 though is the price. As mentioned a couple times, it's going for around 50 US dollars. The only issue I have with Scythe coolers is here in Australia because you can't get them. They don't exist here. So Scythe, if you ever watch this video, fix this, all right? We want Scythe coolers here in Australia. PC Case Gear used to sell them, so I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe not enough people were buying them and that's why they don't sell them here. Anyways, let us know what you think about the Fuma 3. I think Scythe absolutely nailed it. And the fact that it can keep a 13900K in check for 50 US dollars is pretty special. Let us know what you think. I think, I think it's a nice cooler. If you guys like this video, you know what to do. Like and subscribe if you hated the video. Cool. That's good for you. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. This is a very, very impressive little cooler. I think you guys are gonna like it. Good job, Scythe. Nailed it again. It's like the fifth year in a row you guys have been killing it. Thanks for watching.